Hey everyone, it's Rajan in studio. This video opens a series of lectures on UK sound and electronic music and the emergence of hardcore. The biggest confusion with hardcore is that at different times and in different places this term was used to refer to completely different styles of music. In the early 90s music of the London-based Shut Up and Dance label was called hardcore. Pop rave songs of such groups as Altern 8 and Shades of Rhythm were called hardcore too. Brutal Belgian and German techno were called hardcore in the same period of time. In this video I will talk about bleep and bass, a genre that launched the evolution of the UK sound, genre that is definitely not the one we would like to call hardcore today. Let's go. <laughs> Rave in Britain initially started out as a phenomena almost entirely based on export products. In the end of 80s, English dance music couldn't compete in quality with American house and techno. Everything began to change with the emergency of two English scenes. Shut Up and Dance label in London, breakbeat hardcore, and the bleep and bass genre in the north of England. Bleep and bass was the first native English genre of dance music and its greatest influence is noticeable in genres close to UK garage. Everything with fat and thick bass. Less obvious is its influence on hardcore jungle dubstep and grime. British musicians produced house and techno in the end of 80s, but it was not the best music on the scene. On the other hand, bleep and bass was fresh, mysterious and exclusively British. Mark Archer from Altern 8 once said what he thinks about bleep. You wouldn't have had hardcore had it not been for bleep. If you took bleep out of the equation, British dance music would be completely different. Bleep is important and influential because it was the dance music genre that focused on the sub bass. It is also characterized by exceptional minimalism, simple melodies in the style of Kraftwerk Calculator, sporadic atonality and the beats from the Roland TR909 machine. Bleep is also peculiar because of the quality of the sound. It was made on analog hardware with minimal number of samples. If we compare Bleep with the music of the London-based gang Shut Up and Dance, we will hear that the hardcore Braybeat with its dirty samples sounds cheap and lo-fi, but Bleep sounds fat and high-end even in our times. Listen to the song by Shut Up and Dance for example. Now check that bleep tune by Nightmares and Vax. All the tracks that I'm going to talk about now were played in clubs, illegal raves and pirate radios. Bleep's success lasted only for two years. In 1991 much faster and manic forms of music supplanted it, hardcore breakbeat in particular. Bleep emerged in the north of England within the scene of electro, hip-hop, breakdancing and of course Chicago house fans. House had tremendous influence on the local boys, but the final decision to sit in the bedroom studios in an attempt to create music of their own was because of the artist, a guy called Gerald. His track Voodoo Ray had a huge impact on local scene and it was released in 1988. The next step in making the earth tremble with sub bass was made by Bradford based project Unique 3, the theme. This cold and cavernous track had only one hook, a primitive percussive tune that sounded like it had been played on an ancient push button telephone. When I was a kid I was allowed to surf the internet from 5 to 7 in the morning because the internet and the phone were on the same line and they could not work at the same time. However, worst of all was the sound of the modem. This track reminds me of those shameless 56 kilobyte modem sounds. Just add a brutal bass to the sound of the modem and voila, the track is ready. The 
David Bahar, a member of Unique 3, once said that he wanted to find the dirtiest bass sound that could be created. During some recording session, he heard a low frequency feedback from the speaker. He simply recorded it on a cassette player. The next release by Bradford Boys has a much richer sonic palette due to Brazilian rhythms, a kind of cross between electro, latino and dub. The influence of dub was very important to the emergence of bleep. British people grew up in a multicultural atmosphere and it was common to party at the reggae sound system where sub bass is one of the most important elements. When guys from Unique watched the crowd was going bonkers right after the reggae fat bass rolled in after the drop, they tried to recreate that feeling in their music. Fat bass was a common thing in the black community and those who came in contact with it. And for white England, it was an unknown phenomenon. Only after bleep genre became popular on the dance floors, the whole country found out what the real sub bass is. In the musical revolution, the shuffled bass label Warp played a huge role. Its history begins after the dudes from the label failed to sign on Unique 3. Therefore, they decided to release music by Forge Masters Project, a track with no name. This bleep and bass was recorded in bedroom in just one evening and is one of the most important releases of this era. Forge Masters was named after the Sheffield Steel Factory. The practice of naming musical acts in honor of industrial factories actually comes from Kraftwerk, the German power plant. It is also worth remembering Steel Symphony by industrial metal band Die Krups. By the late 1980s, Sheffield had two important features. First, it was famous for its factorial and proletariat. Industrial Sheffield had plenty of abandoned warehouses, perfect for illegal raves. Thousands of people in an abandoned factory, a few light bulbs and a human swamp in total darkness. All these raves were good at making quick money. You put several people at the entrance, secretly promote the event, bring a sound system and DJs and the party is ready. This gave the scene a sense of adventure, of a crime and illegal drugs, as if everyone were walking on the edge. Bleep of course was immediately tested on those dance floors. The second feature of the city was that in the early 80s there was already an established electronic scene with avant-garde groups like Cabaret Voltaire, Clock 2, Chuck, British Electric Foundation and Human League. They all experimented with synthesizers, drum machines and tape loops. This means that by the end of the 90s the city already had the infrastructure of cheap recording studios. It is also appropriate to say that the Sheffield electronic scene of the early 80s inspired those who created techno in the rapidly dying industrial Detroit. Cybertron's vocals suspiciously resembles the local synth pop group Human League of the early period. Like concrete musicians use tape recorded noises and post punks use non musical elements, bleep producers used sampler test tone to make the sub bass fatter. This test tone can be heard on Sweet Exorcist track Test Tone, a project by Richard Kirk of Cabaret Voltaire and DJ Parrot. Huge amount of this rumbling frequency spectrum was in the sub frequencies, which you feel rather than hear. This visceral pulse was ruthlessly driving all the people crazy on the dance floor. The test tone had real power, how could you not use it? It very quickly became the basis for bass in many songs. The Warp label economic model would later become the benchmark for how the entire hardcore scene would live. It was both the label and the music store. Same was uh, with the uh, Bonsai Records in uh, Antwerpen. Warp DJs worked in the store, played records at clubs and raves and made tracks for the label. 
The store helped the producers to be in direct contact with their audience and DJs. The club provided an opportunity to test new tracks in order to make corrections later. It was the same aesthetic and commercial process as in dub culture in Jamaica. Bleep and Bass absorbed the vibe of Jamaican dub and black American music, hip-hop, techno, house and electro. Bleep retained the acid hypnotism and pulsation of house and techno while using syncopated beats which came from dub. This approach is much closer to jungle than to house. You can hear it on one of my favorite bleep tracks by Ital Rockers. Quite from the beginning, MC declares his Jamaican roots. Rhythm full of culture, yeah. Now we come close to LFO project from Leeds. In the mid 80s, those guys were teenagers from hip hop scene. They recorded a bass sound and the cassette by oversaturating the signal. All lights burned red. Then sampled this sound again and repeated the process several times. When the vinyl is cut, a huge part of the frequencies is left outside. But LFO persuaded the vinyl engineer to remove the filters and cut the tracks in full frequency spectrum. The engineer would be sitting there sweating as he watched the temperature gauge go right up. Because your cutting heads get really hot if you haven't got the filters on. And he'd be saying, you gonna fucking destroy me, ya bastards. Everyone called this northern style bleep and bass or simply bleep. In general, bleep means a simple melody that one can play with one finger. However, the whole point was not in the melody but in the bass. If the glasses and windows trembled in the club, this meant that everything was mixed correctly. The duo Nightmares on Vex recorded the all-time war classics after math. A bowel tremor undertow of low-end frequencies with a flat kick and syncopated groove. Something is going on in my head. This is something unreal, the song says. Hallucinogenic vocals describe the distraught state right before you vomit. Aftermath peaked at number 38 on the UK charts in 1990. Two other tracks from Warp label hit the charts too. The first one is the cartoon disco Tricky Disco. During this track, I imagine Chip and Dale doing jig right after the pill hits. <laughs> Three tracks from the label hit national charts and sold pretty well. Nevertheless, the company was facing financial disaster, having signed a band distribution deal. LFO saved the label by recording the highly successful long player Frequencies. Not just definitive bleep and bass record, but one of the dozen and so truly great albums the electronic dance genre has yet produced. A clear and strict pulsating rhythm, it was much more like an electro track rather than house or techno one. Frequencies has a chamber vibe as if it was recorded in the heart of small machinery room with constantly running clanking gears and transport panels. LFR used myriad shades of bass. Sub sub bass, travel in your ear hole bass, anima bass, internal injuries bass. Check out the bass sound on the track Nurture. And on my favorite tune, LFO. Above the gluey low frequency, you can hear a breath of a cybernetic ghost. Love that tune. Here is another excellent breathing exercise from Sweet Exorcist. In the track named Clonk, everything gurgles and bubbles to engage the lovers of deep, visceral bass.
Simon Reynolds claims that rock and roll and bleep are similar in the way that both genres focus on rhythm and groove while taking melodies aside. However, I would not say that about all the compositions in genre. Listen to the dreamy and jazzy track from 1991 called Join the Future. It has an interesting and rich arrangement. By the way, uh, there is only one book about bleep and bass and it is called Join the Future. It was released about one year ago. Bleep and bass blossomed not only because of Warp label. There were plenty of tracks outside. For example, Pressure by Ability 2. I adore its dub version with a trippy underwater reverb. The space of the track is filled with a delayed eternity and it is quite a rare phenomena in the genre. One of my favorite tracks. The next track by Rhythmatic Project was released on the label network that was famous for bringing Detroit techno to England. The original version is drawn in the bass and the remix by Robert Gordon from Forge Masters is the real underwater beast. The track by High Rise Project called Ride the Rhythm begins with a signal and a call out to feel the rhythm. Then everything begins to jump, twist and swirl like the objects on the factory assembly line. Another great project that also survived the decline of the genre and also had no connection to Warp Records is Orbital. This duo created their debut single Chime without a budget, but it quickly climbed to the top of the local charts. When Orbital were invited to the top of the pops in 1990, they confirmed the fears of all those who assumed that electronic musicians do not know how to play traditional instruments. Orbital just push the button and dance near the scene without even pretending they are doing something important. The main melody of the track is a simple piano melody. It actually anticipated what would soon become a distinctive feature of hardcore. A simple percussive melody and nervous string staccato behind. By the end of the 1991, bleep and bass has almost dried out as a genre. It was substituted by hard tracks with breakbeats, pianos from Itala House and sped up and pitched vocals. Hardcore had much more mid frequencies like in heavy metal guitars. Breakbeat hardcore would be the next thing on the British electronic scene. In the next lecture, I would describe another side of British electronic scene. Then we'll take a look on what was going on in Germany and Belgium in the early 90s. Now that's the time to hit subscribe and other famous buttons and join my Patreon page. Just to avoid confusion, I have two Patreon pages. The first one is Russian, the second is international. The Russian one is beautiful, the international one is uh, new, Tabula Rasa. See you soon, people. Turn off that motherfucking radio. Yeah, I just wanted to call the second. Turn off that motherfucking radio. Yeah.